team like Kyrie and KD Or the Lake Show with King James and AD Wish I could match him up with the bad boys from the 80s But no black and white, I need that in HD Yeah, dog Yo, what's good, y'all? It's your boy Ed Hen Dog, and we back to it. You know how we do it. I need to put some WD-40 in this chair. I know y'all be hearing my chair squeaking. Oh, I gotta get some WD-40 ASAP. But part four, part four, y'all. Part um, Brett Favre. Part um, what's is the number four? Part Chris Bosh. Part. I don't know. Give me some other fours, some some fours in the comments. But it's part four, man, of the Magic Johnson and Larry Bird: A Courtship of Rivals basketball documentary. Uh, the first three parts been fire. Uh, if y'all haven't watched those, go ahead and check those out ASAP. But we getting into part four. We still got about a little under an hour left in this documentary, so it's still a lot more information. We ain't nowhere near done, so we probably gonna have about two or three more parts of this. I'm not really exactly sure. I don't have like a exact timetable when I want to, you know, stop the video. It's just kind of, you know, when I feel like it's the right time. It might be the right time, it might not be the right time, but hey, it's my YouTube channel, so I, I do what I want. But let's get into it, man. We got Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, A Courtship of Rivals Basketball, Part 4. Let's get it. Magic wanted to be friends with Larry Bird. He wanted to be friends with him on the World Invitational Tournament, and Larry just wasn't very receptive. I think he wanted to be friends with him during the Final Four. Larry wouldn't even go over and shake his hand. So now Magic's saying, well, what's with this guy? Everybody loves me. How come you don't love me? And then they get to their rookie year, the first time they play each other, well, they have a very hard foul. Oh. And they have to be separated a little bit. And Magic's like, all right, well, I have with this guy. You don't like me? Fine. All right, good. I don't like you either. You know, he's a, a very uh, competitive player, and I'm a very competitive player, and uh, we go head to head, and uh, we go for blood almost. The vibe was, it was nasty. It was ugly. It was, uh, we didn't like each other. I'm the one that did all that. To tell you the truth, it was, I just want to be hanging around him. I mean, that's my main competition. So... Magic wanted to be cool. Magic wanted, you know, Magic was the smiley guy that, you know, wanted to be really cool with everybody. And Larry Bird's like, I'm not on that shit. Like, I don't want to be cool with you. I don't want to be cool with the ops. Y'all know what the ops is. That's short for opposition. Don't ask me why in 2022 we call people ops. But Ma Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, they was ops. They were, they were opposition. So uh, Larry Bird, like, yeah, I don't want to hang out with you. I don't want to be... You know, smiling with you like this is not what this is about. Like we are, we are rivals at this point. You just beat me in the national championship. Like, what do you want from me? And Magic, like, all right, you know what? You're right. You're right. We ain't, I ain't about. To, you know, I'm, I'm done trying to be nice to you. Like, we rivals. Like, we competitors now. So, I, I like, I like the dynamic of that. And he couldn't escape the memory of losing to him in 1979. Facts. Oh, it ain't any bad that he didn't win that national title against Magic. That was something that just burned me. It was one thing for them to be in the 79 championship. Magic had the better team. Everybody agreed with that. Magic had the better game. Fine. Now you get to the pros. Larry has this incredible year. But there he is, watching in a club while Magic Johnson wins a championship. And he's thinking, ah, all right, I'm behind two to nothing now. I watched that game and I couldn't believe it. I always wanted to play at that level. But what Bird couldn't possibly have known was that he had inspired Magic's performance when he was named Rookie of the Year earlier that same day. That's the crazy. PR person from the Lakers says, hey, Irvin, the Rookie of the Year voting has come out. And Magic says, okay, well, who won? And he said, well, Larry Bird won. And Magic says, well, was it close? And he said, oh, no. He went wow. out that day, yes, to try to win the NBA championship, but also to prove it to one Larry Bird. You know what? I should have been Rookie of the Year. Even though I won the championship, I still won the win Rookie of the Year, too. He won that championship. I was pissed. I won him one. But even after he had won one the next year, his obsession only grew deeper. I'd get up in the mornings and see what he did, because their games came on late. Then you look at the box score. I had to have him there for some reason. It's like a crutch. Somebody I could compare myself to. I hated what was being said that Larry was better than me and 
I'm just a guy who can control the game. My first four or five years, that bothered me a lot. I love it. I love it because, you know, Larry Bird got his stuff that, that people was kind of, you know, keying on. And then Magic got his stuff that people is like keying on. So, like, Magic got, you know, beating him in the national championship. And then him going to win the finals. Like, that's all the stuff that Magic, you know, got on Bird. But Bird got stuff on Magic, too. You know, he's a... They, they were saying he's the best, like, he's the best all-around player. It literally says it right there. Uh, he won Rookie of the Year. So it's like there was things that Larry Bird was doing that Magic wish he could have got. And it was stuff that Magic got that Larry Bird wish he could have got. So I think that's super cool. That's super dope. Because they was really, at the time, they didn't notice it. But they was both pushing each other to become, you know, super great players. Like, at, at the time, you know, they was just being competitive and, and, and probably envying each other a little bit. You know, not really liking, kind of jealous in a way. But I think it helped him out. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all think that, that helped him out in the long run? Because I definitely do. I didn't tell nobody it bothered me, but it did. Their competitive dislike emerged from a greater truth, that on the court, they were doppelgangers. Mm. Team-oriented stars who cared about winning above all else. Basketball savants who fused the substance of the 60s with the style of the 70s to create mm. a new and exciting Yet selfless way to play the game in the 1980s. Chief! Yeah, I'm gonna pass. But I'm gonna pass in a way to make you look like a jackass. <laughs> they were so similar in the way they competed. I mean, if they were two halves of the same brain. Same. What was the quote? They said, Magic Johnson make easy passes look hard. And Larry Bird make hard passes look easy. I think that's a super good quote for both of them. Like, doesn't take anything away from them from being great passers, but they were different type of passers. So, I, I think that's kind of interesting. Craziness to excel. I seen that first couple days I was with him. Basketball IQ off the chart. Seen the game a little different. Most players playing the game the right way was everything. A lot of guys can just score. A lot of guys can just rebound. A lot of guys can just make plays. We can do it all. Larry and Magic could control the game with 12 shots. It was amazing. They'd be 7 for 12. They'd have 20 points, 15 rebounds, and 12 assists. And you go, man, the guy shot the ball 12 times and was the best player on the court by far. But I think it was tough at first. I don't think either one of them wanted to recognize that they had any equal anywhere in what they did. Ooh. But they sure as hell didn't want to recognize that their equal happened to be that other guy. Who said Bird wasn't athletic? Each other too, because we knew we were mirrors of each other. I think for a while, the two of them had, they had to come to grips with that. They had begun changing the game, but with continued low television ratings and tape-delayed finals, the league was struggling to get the word out. When the NBA and CBS signed a new TV deal for the 82-83 season, the rescue plan was simple. Sell more bird and magic, and sell them not just as ball players, but as arch-rival characters in their own dramatic saga. You got this slick Showtime African American guy out west, and you got the lunch bucket, floppy haired white guy with the bruises all over his body. It's central casting, it's perfect. I mean, this was like made in heaven. In 1979, this idea of magic and bird was created, and so that was sort of a no brainer. We'd have a double header, it would be the Celtics playing first, and the Lakers playing second, and that's the way we did it. And when the Celtics and Lakers both reached the finals just a year into the new TV deal in 1984, it appeared the superstar investment was about to pay off. It was huge. It was probably the biggest moment the NBA had up to that point. You had Boston and L.A., East against West. It had all the elements of, of a classic showdown. Including what was becoming the most inescapable element of all. Did we know that the blacks and whites were lining up, the whites with the Celtics, the blacks with... Of course we knew that. Mm -hmm. Even in the Celtics' own backyard. They land at Logan Airport at the 84 Finals. He's getting accosted by various people who are telling him Larry's going to take him down. But this <laughs> one older African-American gentleman comes up to me and goes, Magic, I want to wish you well. Good luck. I want you to crush the Celtics. And he said, oh, well, where are you from? He said, well, I'm from Boston. And he said, you're from Boston and you're rooting for the Lakers? I thought everybody here was crazy about the Celtics. And he looked right at me and said, now why would I root for those white boys? Mm. Boston, after all, was a town still scarred by the ugly busing crisis of the mid-70s. A violent period of urban unrest during which white had been pitted against black. The resulting taint on the city nationally, coupled with a Boston roster littered with white players, 
affirmed to many black Americans that the Celtics were not the team for them. Even today, people said, you can play with the Celtics. And, you know, I hated you at that time. You know, I, I wanted Magic to win. I didn't want that damn Larry Bird to win. We had all these black players, mm. but they looked at us because we had Larry Bird leading us as a team that was white. They were perfect archetypes for what was becoming the biggest story in sports. But for the real life players, the narrative was much simpler. It's finally going to happen. We get to go head to head again. It's just a matter of rolling that ball out there and let's get it on. Mm. Welcome let's to get the Boston it. Garden. Before this game starts, man, let's get a posture check. You know, y'all, let's fix them postures. I know, I know, I know the person that's watching right there. You want, you just watching right there. I know you, I know you leaning down, man. Get up, get up and fix that back. We can't have no back issues. The start of the NBA World Championship Series. I'm Brad Musburger. In each of the last four NBA World Championship Series, ever. either Magic or Bird has competed. But this is the first time I've been hearing that two voice for years. For the time. LA. Man, we jumped out on them that first game, and we won in Boston. And with less than a minute to go, in before we get into the rest of this game, um, please, 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 I want to start getting into actual uh, series, final series. If it's Eastern Conference, Western Conference, you know, NBA Finals, like it doesn't really matter. But what I want to start doing is. Uh, starting with game one, and I'm gonna react to every single game in that series. So if y'all want to see this, 19 was it, 1984? I'll do it. You know, I'll react to the whole game one, the whole game two, and just do it for every single game throughout that series. So write some of the best series of all time that I should react to in the comments right now. I appreciate it, y'all. In game two, the Lakers were closing in on a commanding Damn, series. Green. Lead. He's still. He's still. Tied up. From that point up, things began to crumble. Ooh, a crumble for the Lakers. Give it to Kareem. Give it to Kareem. Come on, Magic. Cheesy Johnson dribbling the timeout. <laughs> what are you doing? What was that, Magic? The Lakers regained their stride in game three. I like that right there, though. I like that right Rudy there. Knocked off it again in game four. Oh! And now let's watch it. Cooper and the Celtics are now the benches In 2022, that would have been an ejection, Cooper suspension, fine. Back then, that was probably just a regular fog. He started fighting and started playing. Kareem oh. Swings the elbow. And now, Gillian and Larry Bird. Okay, Kareem. Okay, Bird. Bird gang, where y'all at? Not mentally tougher than the Celtics. Magic's just not himself. We'll be sure they won't let the time run out, but they did in game two. Harris stands the ball, and the Celtics call a timeout. There are a number of places where, you know, Irvin didn't do what people expected him to do. He's a human being. He's not perfect. I think the great thing about this is, is like, it just shows that, you know, superstars aren't perfect. You know, it's... It kind of makes what makes their career, their legacy even better, the ups and downs that they had to go through. So I'm happy I get to see stuff like this because everything isn't just perfect for Bird. Everything isn't just perfect for Magic. Like, they had their, their, their mess-ups, but it's all about how you respond to that. That's kind of a life lesson, actually. He misses the first. Missed both. Johnson misses the both. Celtics want a timeout. Missed both. Bonded. Magic Johnson goes to the bench. Bird. 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 Ooh, it's OT. Series tied 2 2. Game five went to the Celtics. Game six to the Lakers. Oh, it went seven? It's like 1979 all over again. Down to one game for Bird and Magic. If everybody had to look at it, probably would have said this is going to be seven game series. Well, I thought we'd sweep them in four, but uh, <laughs> it's a little bit longer now. I'm Robert Bird, man. We supposed to sweep these dudes. That's the only time I ever felt that. There ain't no way they're walking out here with a win. No way. Game seven, what happened? Oh, I know this. Hey! Okay, Bird. So Bird went 
crazy in Game 7. See, I'm definitely going to react to this series. I have to. Send me the link, y'all. I wouldn't have filed, Magic. I'm sorry. Get out of there, bro. Look at him. He said, these the mobsters is coming to get me. <laughs> I pride myself in, in being the guy who's going to win it for us and and deliver under pressure. And um, it didn't happen. I hope he was hurt. I hope it killed him. <laughs> he made some bad plays down the stretch and nobody in there was happier than me. You know, not only when the game makes you feel good, but just knowing the other guy's suffering and you know he was. I remember after the game that both he and I uh, were in the shower crying. That's tough. That's tough. But I got a question for y'all. And I don't even know if you can even answer this because it's kind of a, a tough question. But after 1984, this is the 1984. I'm pretty sure this is 1984. I think that's what I heard. Who would you say had the upper hand on the, on the other person at this time? So uh, I'm going to do it quick. Uh, Magic won a national championship. He won the finals in his first year. Um, you know, pretty sure he had you know great stats at this point. But Bird, you know, got Rookie of the Year. He was the quote unquote the better all around player. Then he won the championship in '84 against him. Like when 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 Magic won in 1980 his rookie year, that was against Philly. That wasn't against Boston. So the fact that Larry Bird actually beat you know Magic in the finals. I think that means a little more. So who would y'all say, you know, if you had to pick in th at this point in time, who the better player was? You know, who would y'all pick, Bird or Magic? Let me know in the comments. Stayed in there for about 35, 40 minutes. It was hard because not only had we lost to the Boston Celtics, he had lost to his nemesis, Larry Bird. Mm, that's tough. I think he just made me dislike him more, you know, because he was that good. And, and I think you, you, you be jealous. You, you jealous a little bit. You don't even realize it, does hey. You even with Made a better player. Happened between Michigan State and Indiana State all those three years ago. Yeah, we're professionals now, but uh, I want this one for Terry Holt. Well, it was a big deal. Oh. I remember asking Quinn Buckner about it afterwards. They had a celebration in downtown Boston after they won the championship. And, you know, it was unusual for Larry to have these little outbursts, as Quinn would call them. But, you know, about 11.30 at night, finally he turned to Quinn. He goes, I got him. I finally got him, and he was talking about magic. The Celtics, Bird Gang, where y'all at? The league was rejoicing. Where y'all at? I see y'all. Game seven of the '84 series was one of CBS's highest-rated telecasts of the year, and the highest-rated game the NBA had ever produced. All of a sudden, whether it was at CBS or Madison Avenue, sports writers around the country became phenomenal. What is happening here? Mm. The absolute foundation in this resurgence was the Celtics and the Lakers, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. I'm BG, that was But Magic was in no mood to bask in the accomplishment. I took a, a media beating. Tragic Magic. This is why we say Larry Bird is better. It's probably the first time ever in my life I was depressed. Damn. I didn't want people to see me. You was depressed? It was something I never dealt with in my life. That particular series, that championship series, redefined his whole career because he never stopped working after that. Mm. Magic was on a mission. Okay, to prove to himself and the world that with the ball in his hands, he was still the one in control. And after his Lakers ran through the 85 season, he quickly got what he wanted. Okay, so it's 85 now. The Celtics. They won the East, we won the West. So it's like uh, everybody just get ready, sit back, and uh, let's enjoy it. They played them back to back? <laughs> but that smile belied the intensity oh. of the clash that awaited. If I had a glass of water and any of those guys had been on fire, I would drink the water and watch them. And they I mean, they us, hated each other. You know, chokers and sissies. You know, we didn't like that, and they thought less of us. I knew they did. Oh! Five, we played them four times in exhibition season for some reason. I don't know why they scheduled that. By the fourth game, there was an all-out brawl. 
Danny Ainge. They call this one of the greatest rivalries in all of sport, the Celtics, the Lakers. And if that is true, it is the most one-sided rivalry in all of sports. Eight times these two have met for the NBA championship, and eight times the Celtics have won. What? I didn't know that. I didn't know that, Lakers. Y'all was 0-8. Well, I ain't going to say y'all because I'm a diehard Laker fan. We're 0-8 at this point. This is 1985. We 0-8 against the Boston Celtics in the finals. That's terrible. Come on, Jerry West. Come on, Magic. Y'all got to do better than that. But, hey, shout out to the Bird Gang. Shout out to the Celtics, man. But in the 85 finals, Magic changed the script. Over six grueling games, he masterfully controlled the pace with all-around brilliance. He has a triple-double again. Behind their point guard, the Lakers finally knocked out the Celtics. But they beat him? Winning the clinching game in the Boston Garden. In the Garden. In, in the Garden. The so now they won an eight. Okay, Lake Show. Redemption. The one Magic Johnson. It's a long year last year to wait for this moment right now. Magic had evened the score with Bird on the NBA floor. And that's where we're going to end this video at. Them both going one and one in the finals against each other. But I appreciate y'all for watching this video. We got about 30 minutes left. I think that might have been my favorite one. That was it had a lot of you know, action in that one. So I enjoyed that one. But we probably got a couple more videos left of this. This is a dope, super dope documentary, man. I'm enjoying every single second of it. And I'm sure y'all is too. Even for the people that's been watching it before. I know y'all like me hearing my, you know, how I feel about it. My take on it is, is kind of cool, you know, a, a fresh take on it. So I appreciate y'all for tapping in with me. Make sure y'all write how y'all feel in the comments. Y'all be doing a great job, man. Like I, I read every comment, you know, I try to respond to every comment as much as I can. Like, you know, I, I put the hundred emoji a lot, you know, so if I, if I actually read it and I, and I rock with what you said, I'll put that. You know, if you put something like super specific, and you know, I feel like I need to answer the question, I'll answer the question. But if I don't agree with it, I'm probably not even going to like it or, or do nothing. So don't, you know, don't take like, oh, he just put the 100 emoji. Like, that's just a, a generic him just wanting to reply. Like, it's, that's really not it. Like, I'm really agreeing with it. And I just wanted to let y'all know that I'm reading the comments. So don't be shy on the comments, man. I appreciate everybody that's doing that and that's going to continue to do that because it's a journey. It's a journey, man. I'm, I'm, I'm growing every day and it's because of y'all. So... I hope that y'all, you know, enjoy, you know, my, my information, my, my entertainment, because I'm enjoying everything. So I appreciate y'all like always. Until next time, man. We out.